I'd like to briefly share my thoughts with you on guessing in the math section. There are a lot of experts out there who say that if you can eliminate at least one wrong answer, it's to your advantage to guess. Uh, and while I think that's pretty good advice, I have a slightly different philosophy. Uh, and my philosophy is this, that when you think about math, uh, math is black and white. There's a right answer and a wrong answer. Okay, there's nothing in between. There's not an almost answer, a pretty good answer. It's right and it's wrong. Okay? I did a written blog on the valedictorian of Princeton University, and, and what I discussed in that written blog was the fact that almost every year the valedictorian of Princeton University is a student from math or science. And, and I think the reason is that in the math and sciences, if you're an off the charts genius and you get every single problem right in the homeworks and quizzes and tests, you're going to get an A or an A plus in every single class, regardless of whether the, the teacher likes you or recognizes your brilliance. And when you think about the humanities, the liberal arts, it's very subjective. So if you're an off the charts terrific writer, but you get one teacher along the way who doesn't recognize your brilliance or doesn't like you for some reason, you're going to get an A or an A minus or a B plus and you're out of the running for being first in your class. Okay? So when I think about math, I think about black and white, right answer, wrong answer. And when I think about you know, verbal stuff, I think there's a lot of room for you know, different opinions. All right? So now let's go back to the SAT math. When you do a problem in the SAT math, okay, let's say you spend a minute on a problem. This is how I think you should spend your time. You should spend about 45 or 50 seconds reading the question again and again and again until you finally understand what the question's all about and what the situation's all about. If you don't make that investment in time, you are not going to get the right answer, okay? So if you read it once and you don't get it, don't panic, okay? I'm pretty good at these problems and I have to read them a few times to get, the, get what's going on in a lot of the problems. So read it a few times, make that investment in time, and if at the end you understand clearly what's going on in the problem, the right answer is going to be obvious to you or how to get the right answer, the calculations required will also be obvious. All right? Now if at the end of that 45 or 50 seconds you feel like you're not getting anywhere, just skip it and move on. Okay? Now let's talk for a second about this notion of eliminating one or two wrong answers. All right? This is my philosophy. You're either going to get it or you don't get it. And to me there's not much in between. The people who make the SAT, they are going to put a lot of awkwardness in the problems, they're going to put a lot of tricks in the problems, and if you're not clearly understanding the problem and getting one single answer, what makes you think you're narrowing it down to the right two? Okay? So my philosophy is if you can't understand the problem fully and completely, you probably aren't seeing all that's there, the two that you think you're eliminating may not be the right two to eliminate, the answer might be in those two, uh, so I would just leave it blank and move on. All right? So there are 54 questions, and I would say you have two free guesses. And I'm going to qualify that statement in a second. But I think you have two free guesses, and this is why I think you have two free guesses. You lose a quarter of a point for each wrong answer. So let's say you guess on two and you get those wrong. Your raw, your raw score is going to go down a half a point, but they're always going to round back up again. So if you get two wrong and you go from a 34 to a 33 and a half, it gets rounded back up to a 34. There are two freebies for you. Now I said I want to qualify what I said before and I'm going to qualify it because in the free response section it's a little bit different. There are no answer choices and so there's no penalty for a wrong answer. So when you get to the free response that's number 9 through 18 in, in the, usually the middle section, you can guess wildly if you want. All right? You should obviously read the problems and try to get the right answers, but let's say you're running out of time and there are three you haven't gotten to. Before time is called, you might as well just write down some answers. Now, what should you write down if you haven't gotten a good look at a problem? This is my suggestion. If you can spend you know, a few seconds looking at a problem and getting a feel for it, and let's say, for example, it's a problem on probability, and you know the answer's got to be 0, 1, or something in between, clearly you want to answer in that range. You don't want to throw down the number 20. Okay? But if you get to a problem that you, know, you have no idea on, or you don't even get to a problem, and you want to put an answer in to at least give yourself a chance, my suggestion is you put down the problem number. So for number 18, write down 18 as your answer. For number 16, if you haven't gotten that one, write down 16 as your answer. Why do I give that advice? I've done a lot of SATs over the years, and, and oftentimes the answer will match the problem number in that section. It's better than nothing, so give it a shot. Hopefully my advice, while it's a little different than what you might hear from other experts, will help you maximize your score.